When I hear tell of a flood of migrants, I think back to my history lessons. And how great civilizations in Egypt, Sumer and Akkad and proud Assyria were utterly dependent for their fertility and flourishing and the fecundity of their farmland on the way they could depend on their rivers to burst their bounds in season. the mighty Euphrates, pregnant Tigris, and heavy Nile. Washing across the parched and thirsty land, and bearing in their lavish, liquid bodies the magic silt of growth and harvest, washed from the inclinations of God knows how wide an earth. And which now fanned out in droplets, Over everywhere they hoped would sprout and change from what it was. The seared and stagnant same. and spark to something that might not have been. Something born of physical grace and therefore utterly miraculous. obvious floods. Where the rippling riches brown came muscling in across the desiccated pasture. Never mind the subtle seeping ones, the seeps to which the watcher pays no heed. When slow change comes at neap tide, under dusk, or a starlit cloak hid by the insouciance of people. But flood and tide and ebb and slack and forth have never been a simple matter of here and back again or east and north. 
or sally out, or simply tack when you have longshore drift, rip tides, even places where the warm world simply glides as if your frail ship were the centre, and your complicated stock of logs and charts, a fatuous and burnable complication of a stainless drifting for a coast. This, though, is rare, as a silver fish that I have heard, on rare occasions, will jump into the nets of fishermen who slept a shift beneath a clement moon. Or, in these days of plastic and endless fears, a right whale mooching curiously up to the gunnels of a ship without harpoons, simply wondering what's the coup aboard, or pondering the physics of this leaf that has such brazen symmetry to disturb the silver curtain of the surface, the mirrored oracle of the worlds from which, as every whale knows, the sun, the birds, and devils come. So, from the other side of the silver veil, the wondering and terrified have sailed. Whether the bronze reef daughters of the south, or the pecunious sons of Utebridge, Flying a fragile path of prayers and breeze upon the border of the two true nations, land and sea. Of which the sea is mother and the great that bore the singing sons of love and steel, laughter and hate.
and stob and stake set in a sometime field between a sometime rift of ice and tangled vines and molten rock reclaimed in a brief affray from a patient sea from mother poisoned by the sun such stubs and staked claims will amount to sand the noblest fate For where the worms make silent burrows, floods are known for genesises. And for nothing less. <laughs> 